Greetings. Welcome to Into the Light. My name is Donald Schmidt, and the topic of today's show is God will make a way for you. There was a time in my life many years ago that I was struggling. I was going through a, a tough time. I started going to church. I met a, a, my friend's sister who was attending the same church. She had a dance studio and she gave me a cassette tape and it said, God will make a way. And I wanted to believe it, but I couldn't because there was just, sometimes when you get bogged down in stuff and it's kind of like the iceberg. You know, you got the iceberg and like one-seventh is above ground and the other six-sevenths is below ground. And I was the type of person who would stuff things and tell everybody it was fine and everything. And, and I, I, I wasn't, you know, and there's a verse. I found this verse and it said in Isaiah 43, I knew nothing about the Bible. I didn't like God. I didn't want to know God. God killed my grandmother, my best friend Peter, and my best friend Dougie, or so I thought when I was from 13 to 16. So God went out the window. I was in Catholic school. I had Sister Mary up beside the head, and I really didn't give two hoots about anything. But when I got to the eighth grade, because my grandmother died when I was like in the fifth grade and Peter died when I was in the sixth grade, it came time to graduate and I didn't have the marks to graduate. I think you needed 70. And I think the teachers knew that I could do better. But I had, I had the stuff and knocked out of me when Nana died in, in 66 and Peter died in 67. I graduated in 68 and I wouldn't have graduated unless the teachers got together and either I was doing really good in one subject or they made it look like I was doing really good on one subject. And it's pretty funny because the subject was religion. And I wanted nothing to do with religion. You know, we had the Moffat Fathers. I was intrigued about them going on missionary trips and everything. I wasn't too intrigued when they got killed, you know, but I was, I, I, I wanted to, you know, I, I wanted to know what it was like and I auditioned for, um, to speak on a microphone at the service and they said I wasn't, I wasn't projecting enough or loud enough and this guy that was more mature wound up being, being the lectern or whatever you call it. And the verse, the title of God will make a way for you. And the verse is in Isaiah 43 verses 18 and 19. Verse 18 says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the ways of old. See, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not be aware of it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And the tape that my friend's sister gave me was by this guy, his name was Don Moen, and, and I listened to it morning, noon, and night. And it was like a medicine for me. And I wanted to believe it. And I started saying, God will make a way. God will make a way. I didn't believe it. God will make a way. And I, I looked at the words and it said, 
God will make a way when there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will be my guide, hold me closely to his side with love and strength for each new day he will make a way. By a roadway in the wilderness he leads me, rivers in the desert shall I see. Heaven and earth will fade, but his name shall still remain and he will do something new today. Morning, noon, and night for 18 months, three times a day. Over. And there was other songs. I am the God that healeth thee. He walked where I walked. And I did it over and over. And things gradually started to get better. Uh, somewhere along the line, my dad passed away and I moved. And God will make a way. God will make a way. God will make a way. And like 10 or 15 years would go past. And I was, on, I was on this journey, and I wound up working in a church in Manhattan that we rented during the week over by Rutherford Place on 15th Street. I think it was called St. George's. And we went in, and there was like a music director was there and I didn't know who it was and we had the church from like 6 to 9.30 and they had it from like 10 in the morning to 6. So I wanted to get out so we could, you know, get the space. And I looked up and it was the guy who wrote the song, God Will Make a Way, Don Moen. And I waited to talk to him for about 45 minutes. I said, Mr. Moen, you know, I was a mess. My life was a mess. I got a hold of your tape. He said, which one? I said, God will make a way. He says, oh, the blue album? I didn't know it was, you know, recorded on a, a cassette tape. And things started to get better. And I hugged him. I thanked him. My life changed. I gave my... I invited Jesus into my heart and I believed it. You know, if you haven't accepted Jesus, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you'll be saved from a hopeless way of thinking and living. You know, I, I had no intentions of being here on the fourth Thursday of the month doing a TV show because God, God's like a prankster. You know, he's got a sense of humor, and I think it's pretty rowdy in heaven because, like, they, they got all these angels and everything and all these elders, and they're going around and they're saying, like, holy, holy. I don't think there's dull, I don't think there's a solemnity there. I don't think it's solemn there. I think it's pretty raucous, you know, holy. Like, maybe God's always changing, and they, they're like, in, in reverential awe of what they're seeing. And today it's, it's different, you know. I, I, try to stay, I try to stay in a moment. I live my life as a tape recorder. I was either in fast forward, running all over the place, getting nowhere, or rewind, regretting my past and trying to change it, when in actuality God wants us to be in play, to be in the moment, just to stay in the moment. And Psalm 118.24 reminds us, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, and it reminds me of a song. It goes, He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice because He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. 
I will rejoice because he has made me glad. And in my life, that growing up, there was like nothing to be glad about. Glad was like the glad trash bags and everything. I wasn't, I was far from glad. I was sad. I was sorry. I was from the sorry family. My family was always saying sorry, sorry, sorry. There was that game sorry. I didn't know. There was a lot of there was a lot of guilt and, and self-loathing on my part. And I didn't think I was worthy. And I didn't think that God could make a way because I didn't believe in God. You know, today, I know that I know that I know that what you're going through, it's going to pass. It may not pass right away, but it's going to pass. You see, there's no drive-through breakthroughs in life. You got to go through to get through. We want, we got instant coffee. We got microwave ovens. We got this and that, and go, 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 go. Where you going? You know. Everybody's in a rush to to, to get to the red light. And I'm I'm really I've. When I was on that bar, bar stool, I couldn't afford to go anywhere. My life was drinking, drugging, gambling, going to the racetrack. It wasn't unusual to go to Belmont Park racetrack, never get more than 11 miles from my house and like lose $3,000 on vacation and swear never to bet again because I had no money and then the next day I had money you no, know, I always found a way to, I always had a job. I always found, I knew it was better to have uh, money in your pocket. And when I, was, when I was getting better, I asked God a question. And I said, I was so self-loathing, did not trust anyone for a very long time. I started to do better and asked God, what do you want me to do? And I distinctly heard him say, tell them your story. Now, my story is your story. Or my story is my story. And your story is your story. But we all have a story. For many years, I lived, I lived in bitterness, anger, and resentment. And I had the moanies all the time. Woe is me, woe is me, why me, a nice guy like me? I like dogs and little kids. I go to church on Sunday. Why poor old me? And then I heard, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. And I started, I started to believe it. Um, the fast forward, it says here, Today's the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And in Matthew 6, 34, it says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will have worries about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And the devil attempts to trouble us you know, telling us we're, we're, we're garbage and never amount to anything. And, and for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son to die for us so that we could live and we could, we, we could be adopted into the household of God and no longer have an orphan spirit, you know, and be called children of God or sons of God. And who the sun sets free is free indeed. And I, I, I was bound and it, it was like, I was at the racetrack one day, there was a snowstorm and I was always, I was always sneaking into the track to get into the track because I didn't want to pay when I was little. So like 10, maybe 12 years ago passed and I'm working at the track and it's snowing and the gates that I used to climb over are closed. So I was so used to going over the fence that I went over the fence and my friend Vinny and Mike come walking out 
and they push the gate and the gate opens. See, lots of times we're in a self-imposed prison and we don't even know that that door is open. You know, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He wants to come in. He wants to, ha he wants to commune with you. He wants to be in community with you. That's exciting. For me, that's exciting. You know, I was like the Lone Ranger. And I didn't trust. And it says in, in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will make your path straight. Now, I looked up all in the dictionary, and guess what? It means all. There's a verse that says, um, he who gives abundantly reaps abundantly, and you'll have all sufficiency in all things to be able to give to every good work. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of hurting people out there. There's a lot of orphans, a lot of widows, a lot of people who, who hate themselves. We have an epidemic of suicides. We need help on Staten Island. We need people to pray all over the nations because this is going too far. The enemy's doing a last-ditch attempt to get people to stop spreading the good news of the gospel. Well, he's in for a big surprise, and he'll see when that comes. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. God's ways are higher than our ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. See, he knows the thoughts and plans he has for you. Plans for hope and a future. The only thing he needs from you today is to be available and say yes. Just say yes. You can, he took my mess and he made it a message. He took my moanies, allowed me to, he was with me going through the test and took my moanies and made it a testimony. He's no respecter of persons. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you because he's God and he cannot lie. Man lies, God can't lie. So in, in Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 to 13, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And I was in, um, like I said, I couldn't afford anything. But now that I kind of signed up with God, I've been to places that I never got further than that 11 mile radius from uh, Belmont Park racetrack in Elmont. And I, I got to go to a racetrack in the United Kingdom in a place called Utoxida. And there's characters at Aqueduct, Belmont, and Saratoga well, guess what? That train car that I was in going to Utoxida, the guy, the guy that I was with had been to Aqueduct, Belmont, and Saratoga. So God puts people in. Nobody else wanted to go, so I went. Man, those, those blokes or whatever they call them, they don't even watch the race. They're just throwing them down. They got a nice girl on their arm. I stayed for four races. I went back home. Well, home to, not home to the United States. I was there for a month. I, I stayed at Little Mollington Hall, and I was in ministry training school to learn how 
to present myself better and learn more about miracles, signs, and wonders. Because we live in a deep, dark world and people are going to have to see blind eyes open, lame legs healed, you know, and the mute talk. And it's, it's going to be an exciting time. And when God told me to tell them your story, I made an acronym for HOPE. And it's honestly offering personal experiences. That's my hope, you know. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. If God has a promise in his word, just stick to, this, stick to that promise day and night. And don't, when you go to bed at night, thank God for the day and give, them, give God all your garbage at night so the devil can't mess with you and just have a clean slate. And in this, the next morning, wake up and just rejoice. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I'm, I'm excited about today. That's all we have. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow's a mystery. Today's a gift. That's why we call it the present. When you, you can be present and not be present. If somebody's talking to you and you're thinking about what you're going to say next, you're not presently present. And to have a conversation, you have to have a speaker and you have to have a listener. Otherwise, there's no communication. Um, I've been blessed to have overcome three suicide attempts, almost bled to death twice, almost froze to death, almost died at birth, four head traumas, three horseback riding accidents, eight months in a psychiatric hospital, 15 months in a homeless shelter. God will make a way for you where there seems to be no way. Don't give up. Don't give in. The devil's a liar. That's all he knows. He doesn't know anything else. He just lies. And I'm just... I feel good. You know, and I just... Things happen and we don't understand why. And, and um, you want to make God laugh? I tell him my plans. And I plan on coming here like the fourth Thursday in every month. And there's a verse in Psalm 2 that says, He sits in the heavens and laughs. And I believe he's laughing with me. He's full of joy. He's full of peace. He's full of kindness. He's a comforter gentleness, peace, you know, and, and he wants us he wants he wants us to have it all. Jesus died for us so that we could live, and when he died, there was one nail and two hands. It was his hand and my hand and his hand and your hand. And when that went, when he was crucified, buried, and resurrected, we were co-crucified. We were co-buried, and we were co-resurrected. So when he came out, all our garbage was left in the body, in that tomb, 
and our spirit raised with him. So now we're a spirit, we have a body, we have a soul which is our mind, our will, our, and our emotions, and we get to carry the good news that God will make a way for you. And I, I honestly believe that. You know, I know that I know that I know that I know that he's no respecter of persons, and if he did it for me, he'll do it. You know, don't quit. Don't, don't quit before the victory. Don't quit before the miracle. Trust God. Help others. If you're having a bad day, call somebody else up and ask them how they're doing. And don't, don't tell them you're having a bad day. When I get, when I get the focus off, off myself, I was selfish and self-centered for many years. And it was me, 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 me. And it's not me, 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 me anymore. It's like, what can I do for you? And it's real simple. Jesus, come into my heart. I am a sinner. You died for me so I could live. You took all my sins, all my stains on that cross forever and ever. I promise to follow you always. And then ask them, ask them what you can do. And start simple. Go, go visit somebody in the hospital. Find, find a community that, that has events. Get, you know, just get connected. I go to International Christian Center on Richmond Avenue, and in the summertime, we have barbecues. So my life has changed, and things are different today, and, and he has blessed me to be a blessing, and I'm grateful, eternally grateful, and I just want to thank you for watching, and we hope to see you next time on Into the Light. God bless you.